Hello! So today we're going to do another um, video review. It is on Lucky Paws this time. Uh, I already have a video on this channel on Lucky Paws, but today I did a little bit of a different build, and this is definitely the higher cap version of it. Um, Lucky Paws is one of the most broken augments in the game. Uh, it doesn't show that well in the stats, but I don't know. I've played it three times, and I haven't gone less than a second with it. I think that um, if you take it from a good spot, it actually is very, very strong. So, here I'll go Lucky Paws. As we can see, it averages a 4.5 in general, right? And then, it, but if you hit a Kabuko, Kabuko 3 star... It averages a 4.45 so it's not like good like in stats not like crazy broken right like you, having a cane 2 averages a 4 uh, for reference right so like um like reference like averages like across all the games that are played i don't know if people are just playing it wrong or if i'm just getting really lucky this game obviously is very high roll so this is an exception right but i think that it's a very strong comp to play for like a top four and you can play really easily for a second. If nobody else high rolls, you can definitely play for a first with this comp. Uh, basically what you're doing, you're just going to play Kabuko, you're going to play Vertical Bruiser, and then you can play whatever backline kind of fits in that you get, right? Um, typically, uh, I think the oldest line was that you would play Kaisa with it. Uh, now, usually you play uh, like Sage with it because Sage works really well. Um, if you haven't seen, there's like a Sage Silas comp. You kind of play it like that because you're going to play Silas for the Bruiser anyway. So Silas is like your secondary carry and then you just stack Sage. Um, if I put like units and I go by Delta of Placement. Uh, oh wait, I'll sh we'll wait here first. So I got Lucky Paws. I'm just sitting around. So um, it's important to note here, I have two Kabukos already, right? I have two Kabukos and I have somewhat defensive items right i have nothing that's slammable right now right but i have a chainmail and i have a cloak so i can make a chainmail item and i can make a cloak item so i have really good defensive items and i already have two kabukos so i'm at five out of uh nine kabukos i'm more than halfway there just taking the augment off rift that's something really important to note if you don't have at least two kabukos in my opinion if you don't have at least two kabukos you should not take lucky paws right you should avoid it because you know if you just take it for tempo, it doesn't really tempo that well because the Kabuko doesn't really do anything unless you 3-star him. Because um, the whole point is that it, it kind of like goes nuts if you 3-star and it goes crazy and it keeps going, right? Um, if you're like maybe in a fortune spawn, you're missing Kabuko, maybe it's a good take. And then you fortune, then you cash out, and then you go for Kabuko 3. Uh, you know, stuff like that can work. Uh, but anyways, uh, these fights, I'm basically just going to sack this entire stage. So I'll show the stats now because the next stage will be kind of fun and funny to watch. And I think it would be more entertaining that way. So let's go to stats. So um, last time I built Kabuk. So first of all, in terms of like what units are good with it. Like obviously if you hit like the five stars, like Irelia is really good. Because Irelia like Kabuko stalls for really the time. Irelia just spreads a bunch of damage. Dragon Lords work really well. Like if you have a Lee Sin, Lissandra obviously. Um, and then you can see here, like, this was talked about, like, a lot of people do, like, the Sage builds some Morgana somewhere in here. A lot of these are really, like, high roll. Obviously, like, having Soraka is probably because you have, like, Wukong and you're doing, like, a heavenly setup. And, um, you know, some of the, now, now Kaisa is pretty bad, right? You usually don't play Lucky Paws into Bruiser Kaisa. I would avoid that because Lucky Paws, you're kind of playing towards, like, this Silas carry, um, and 8 Bruiser, right? If you look at the traits and you look at the... Um, highest performing it's eight bruiser so obviously getting a bruiser spat is beyond broken that's what you want the most recon works really well um i think that's just because like recon with altruist right like uh because you're gonna have altruist with um the riven right riven is a bruiser and is altruist so it fits in really nicely so that's a good idea and as you can see altruist does really well armor works really well for bruisers because bruisers have a bunch of hp so if you give them armor they become like these insane defensive tanks because you're averaging like all the defensive stats right like kabuko is gonna have a shit ton of hp so typically you want to give them a lot of armor and a lot of magic resist right in terms of items um utility seems to do really well on him so last time what i did is i built redemption d claw bramble vest because that's what was the like most played and highest in the stats um, and the idea is that I give a max armor, uh, max uh, magic resist, and then uh, passive like damage reduction and healing. 
And then uh, Dragon Claw also has healing that scales off maximum HP, right? Every couple seconds with Redemption Dragon Claw, you recover maximum HP, and it's completely gonna have a shit ton of HP, right? Because of uh, the way his trait, uh, the way his uh, ability works, right? Uh, but as you can see, Spark is the highest. Keep it, and um, uh, what's it called? Where is it? Uh, Sunfire is also really high, right? It's higher than like Bramble. So. Um, I decided this game to go for a full utility Kabuko with the idea that um, I will go fast 9 after hitting Kabuko 3 and then we'll see what happens. Anyways, um, oh I should have shown this. This was an exciting moment. Um, so like, uh, Darius fucking showed up. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go Darius. That's my dude. <laughs> it's so funny because Darius shows up. What he does is he, um, if you've ever seen it, it's... Um, an older augment was called Pandora's Bench, and basically what it does is that it um, takes the units of the same cost and it rotates them on the bench, right? So, or it changes them into another of the same value, right? So what I'm doing is I basically can roll three one cost for free, and I'm one cost reroll in this lobby. So guess what? Uh, Giga high roll. <laughs> I'm like almost guaranteed Kabuko three with like no gold. Um, that being said. I don't think the Darius plays that much of a role in this because I don't like aggressively use it because I already have five Kabukos. So I'm just like looking like, oh, maybe I'll just like hit another one. Who cares? Let's see what happens. Um, anyways, so I think full utility Kabuko. So they mean when I'm talking about full utility, what I'm trying to say is that um, you can build them like full defensive stats like Sunfire Cape isn't really that defensive and Ionic Spark isn't that def defensive, right? Like they're a, a chainmail and a cloak component. Yes. But, like, if you read the description, uh, Sunfire just gives a little bit of armor, a little bit of HP, and it's mostly for anti-heal. Spark gives a little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, MR, a little bit of AP, and it's mostly for, uh, Shred and damaging opponents, right? So you run into this problem that your Kabuko, late game especially, might not be as tanky. Like, you might not be, like, an unkillable demon. He might actually die at one point, because when, like, units are doing insane amounts of damage, um... The HP will get worn out just as fast, right? As like you won't be like a giga tank, right? But uh, w with the utility, the benefit that you have the utility is you have a constant uptime of the utility because then who's gonna hold your spark? Who's gonna hold your anti heal, right? Uh, because you put on the Kabuko, your Kabuko is gonna live forever, anyways. So um, like, or he's gonna live like very long. So it keeps a constant uptime of these resources, and especially early game, it helps you tempo really hard. So that's why I think the stats are really good on them. So I'm actually going to try and build towards Sunfire Spark plus one. Uh, probably Sunfire Spark Redemption because Redemption uh, re is probably the best like standalone item for Kabuko. Uh, or D-Claw. Something that gives him like HP per second, right? Because he's going to have a bunch of HP. Um, so that that's like the main idea. That's like the concept that I'm going for this game. Uh, I take the cloak uh, or I take the belt. Uh, the reason I take the belt is because on a Kabuko. Typically, you don't take a one cost, but here I have six Kabukos. I just want to guarantee without rolling that it's a Kabuko three as soon as possible, right? Because um, you never know, right? You never know what can go wrong. I want to make sure that I don't spend any gold, right? Um, and the thing with Kabuko is you need to like interest max, right? You want to be making interest every turn because what happens with Kabuko is every turn that you make interest, he gains HP per gold of interest earned. So you want to be at 50 gold the whole way through, right? We'll talk about it more when we see Kabuko 3, which will happen eventually in this game. And I'll talk more about like what I'm playing towards and how to play the comp a little bit better. But for stage um, 2, uh, typically you're just sacking. Typically you're just, it's alright. You know, you just, we'll just sit here, do nothing, right? Uh, because the lost streak gold is way more important. Your Kabuko isn't really strong enough unless you give him like full items, unless you like get dropped like a proper item to give him. Uh, you kind of don't really need to worry about any of that stuff just yet. And then uh, also I need to fix my inking. Uh, and then like the lost streak gold helps build your bank really heavily and building that bank helps to scale your Kabuko later. So it's just really good, right? There's not really a reason to like try and go for a, uh, try and go for a win if that makes sense. Um, oh, this is a really good spot for the, uh, for the inking. I'll leave it here today. All right. 
we got pen also i would like to thank everybody for the subscribers as you can see i made it to diamond three i i def i think i deranked and i'm now diamond four i was trying to grind really like aggressively yesterday because i want to hit masters before the next patch um just because like i'm gonna be really busy in the month of may um i might just not play that much anymore so i might just be stuck diamond until um like late may i don't know how it will go we'll see if i just like happen across like a bunch of good games again and i climb uh, really aggressively maybe i'll go for masters in the next week or so uh but yeah i just don't have the time to like play the games which is kind of unfortunate because i really like this patch um i think it's getting a little bit overplayed now but i still feel like there's a lot of wiggle room there's some nuanced plays like this where you get like an enabling augment and you kind of just can go nuts off of it but um if you're not playing around these and you're playing around the four cost i feel like there's a lot of like edge to be got um if you just like know how to play around every single four cost right if you know like a good support and comp for each four cost you can kind of make it work anyways there is gonna be the last kabuko so uh i have kabuko three it's two seven i'm kabuko three uh gg the game's fucking over and you'll see why in a second but um here i have like so many good components because i have one of each belt cloak and chainmail. I really can't miss unless I get just, just get dropped a bunch of bows and swords. Um, typically, you would want to prioritize making at least one item if you're going for like a three star one cost. Uh, ideally, you have full item set on the dude uh, because you want to make sure that you don't lose any of these fights. So I get tears. So that's my redemption for sure that I'm going to slam. Um, and then I get another belt. So this is where I'm like, okay, I'll probably just that's my sunfire probably. And then I'm just waiting to get a rod for a spark basically. Uh, I get another sword. So now I'm probably playing towards like not uh, an AD. I'm probably playing towards like an, an AD carry backline with all these swords. Uh, we'll see if I get dropped more like AP items later. Uh, I think I double check the stats between Gargoyle and Sunfire just to make sure before I commit. Because Sunfire was a bit lower. But if you put it with Redemption, it actually goes a little bit higher. Um, here I'll show the stats uh, in a second. Let's go stats. See, so if I go Kabuko 3 this, I can go Redemption, right? If I slam Redemption first, and I go here, and I say Craftable, it says Spark Sunfire, right? If you make a Redemption, right? Because I think if you make, if you don't make a Redemption, you make a, de a Dragon Claw. Uh, if you make a Dragon's Claw, then it, it, it kind of messes the stats up a little bit. But Sunfire is always really high up right it doesn't look that high up off a rip it's it's like a little bit lower than d claw um but i i picked redemption and then it says spark sunfire so i'm like yeah i'm down sick so that that's like my process so i slammed it i lost this fight i'm playing faded i just couldn't chew through the front line that's fine uh, i still haven't properly spiked i was loose streaking anyway so i'm okay with it um, I checked the stats while playing the game. Bruiser Crown, I already showed you guys that 8 Bruiser is like minus 1. It's like the best uh, performing traits that you could have for this comp. So it's definitely Bruiser Crown all the way, right? It gives a Bloodthirster, which is kind of like eh, but uh, Bruiser Crown 100%, right? Uh, so here, I'm not leveling. I'm playing super greedy. I am a little bit low on HP. Um, if this is your first time playing the comp, maybe you spend some gold. Um, to make sure that you don't go 8th by accident, but I feel very confident. This is my third time playing it and I haven't I got second I think I got second second and this this game, right? Um, so I Feel very confident especially with the bruiser plus one that I'll be fine um, And the person I played was probably the strongest in the lobby it was five faded with a felios with items I believe or it was three faded with a fellow said items. So it was just a little bit difficult to get through uh, but anyways, let's watch the fight. As you can see, so this is the part of Lucky Paws that people don't really think about, right? Um, and this is what I'll show you. So, what... You see my Kabuko is just one-shotting everybody? Watch this. Ready? Bang! Dead. And you see how there's all this gold getting dropped? So, what Lucky Paws does, if you don't know... Lucky Paws does, does three things, right? One. Kabuko. It gives you a Kabuko. It gives you a Kabuko, too. Two. Kabuko spell 250 percent so what it does it makes a spell do like basically almost triple damage like 2.5x damage 250 percent extra damage and three 
gold. Every enemy that Kabuko kills is 100% chance of dropping one gold. This is the broken part. These other things, fuck these other things. Nobody cares about this. This gold is what makes this augment so much fun and so insane, right? Kabuko's spell scales off of HP. He gains HP from getting interest. You get interest with gold, right? So everything synergizes really, really well. It's actually a really fun thing to play. I think it's a little bit overtuned, but I don't know because the stats say that it averages like closer to a five than a four. So it seems like it's pretty like run in the mill average. I've been placing really high with it, but I don't know if that's just because it might just be because I only take it when I have uh, two Kabukos and I have a really good spot for it. Like I have Kabukos and defensive items. But look at this. I'm earning like five gold per round. Imagine if this augment wasn't lucky pots. Imagine if it said nothing and it was like gain five gold per round. That would probably be one of the best performing augments in the game, right? <laughs> that's a, it's, it's an insane amount of resources. So typically what you do here is once your Kabuko is set up with some items, right? Um, as you can see, because I'm also low HP, a lot of these low cost rerolls starting the game off is kind of low HP gives you prior on uh, item picks, which helps you like complete your items and make sure that you can scale into late game. Um, so here I got fortunate. Nobody wanted the rod. I get to make my spark. I have three item Kabuko. Now, I just want you to wrap your head around this. I'm getting like five gold per round. Kabuko is gaining 100 HP per round. His spell scales off of HP and 8 Bruiser scales off his HP, right? Just think about it. This guy's already an unkillable demon. How much HP does he have already? He has 5,000 HP already. He already has more HP than like most tanks in the game at stage like 6. Like think about that. Just for a second, just like, like think about it for a second. It's like, this Kabuko has more HP and he's scaling still. He's still gaining 100 HP per turn because the way it is is that you gain up at, at um, 3 stars, uh, Kabuko gains 20 HP uh, per interest. Right? So I'm getting 5 interest per turn. This is what you do, right? The Kabuko will carry you for most of stage 3 as well as most of stage 4. You're pretty stable with just the Kabuko. You just literally don't spend a single gold, right? If you look at my interest, I'm scouting out to make sure that nobody's like holding anything. You don't spend a single gold, right? This Kabuko will carry. Nobody has anything close to that. Maybe if someone goes like Kha'Zix or what's not a Kha'Zix, a Kogma reroll, you might run into some problems. Uh, but look at this. Isn't this fun? Is this fun? Is it? Is this the fucking easiest game ever, right? Like, like you, just, you like obviously Darius showed up, so you know, Darius gave me I think two Kabukos, right? So I would have been two Kabukos less. I would have had to roll some gold, so I wouldn't be as good of a position. Let's assume that I'm like, I don't know. Let's assume worst case scenario, right now I'm thirty gold less. Let's say I'm just like twenty gold. Right? Uh, it wouldn't be 30 gold actually because of the scaling. And I just leveled. Uh, let's just say 30 gold less. Let's say I'm 30 gold less here. Is my spot bad? 30 gold less? No, it's not It's not firstable, right? It's like, eh, you know, will you make it to 8? Will you make it to 9? You know, you might have to roll on 8 for a Silas, right? You might have to roll on 8 for a Galio. It's, it's a little bit like, eh, you know, it's, it's scary, right? It's not like, um, it's not like, oh shit, uh, we win the game for free right but that that's that's the difference that Darius made right that every time you get a first in this game in my opinion um unless you're like severely like unless you're in the, like a lobby where you're like smurfing on everybody right and everybody just like playing bad um if you're playing in a lobby where everybody's like equally like playing a good game a first is just like the first is is whoever high rolls the hardest right right you need to high roll a little bit to get a first you can't have like a bad game like a bad opener and a bad like mid game and like convert it to a first based on like raw skill right a lot of times it's like the person in first either has a bunch of resources up from the middle of the game or they hit something really insane in their mid game or they hit some insane item augments or some insane like combat augments There's, there has to be some high roll in your game to get a first right my high roll is that not only did I lucky pause I hit the kabuko through really early so because I hit this Kabuko 3 so early uh, that I was stable, that I was able to build my bank, I am now so much gold up on the rest of the lobby that I am like way ahead of tempo. Right? I'm way ahead of tempo. I find this Azir. Azir is not really useful for me. Um, I don't really get items again. I have this Bloodthirster. The Bloodthirster eventually is going to go on the Silas. Like, that's fine. 
I don't really have another Silas item. I think my best bet here, in my opinion, is just to make like QSS, which I think I end up making. QSS is like a good frontline item. I would ideally like like more AP focused items on Silas, but what can you do? Um, I put in, uh, I have ghostly synergy, so I just put in this cane that I found because it's fine. I'm not leveling because leveling would cost me one gold of interest. I want to scale my Kabuko as much as possible. So I'm just down to uh, basically not like sack because I think I still might win this round. There might be some people that are a little bit stronger. I'm actually losing against this guy. See, this is where um, non-defensive Kabuko becomes a little bit scary. So as you can see, because I'm full utility, uh, the Kale and all the units, like there was a bunch of AP units that were like hard focusing my Kabuko. And they brought his HP down to like half, right? He has way too much HP right now. So they couldn't kill it the whole way. But this guy's like level 7, he didn't even like roll to upgrade his board, like to like actually make a board. Um, as you can see, like it starts to wane down a little bit. So you really need like the rest of your board. It's not like the one-time Kabuko show if you don't make him with like full um, full defensive items, right? What I mean by that is if you don't make like Bramble Declaw, um, the chances are you need like a little bit of extra, sh uh, extra sauce from the other people. Um, here... There was, I, I was checking the stats actually, um, so I don't have to show them, but basically I was looking at what the best augment is, because I didn't want to accidentally just like assume uh, which was better or which was worse. I took, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Final Ascension was pretty good, because obviously they're going to live really long, because I have a bunch of bruisers, I'm going to play 8 bruiser. Uh, but the best thing was unified, right? It's the same reason why Altruist is really strong before. Right now, my front line and my tanks, what do they have? They have a shit ton, an absolute shit ton of HP. Because not only do, is there Kabuko 3 that scales HP, but Bruiser as a trait gives every Bruiser a percentage bonus HP, right? So in this case, uh, Kabuko uh, and all my other Bruisers have a whole bunch of HP. Um, if you have tanks that have a whole bunch of HP and you want to make them stronger, you can just give them armor because now they have everything, right? Uh, here I lose. This guy Giga High rolled. I'm pretty sure he has a Zai. I don't know. I think he might have been Fortune. But look, he's like Hedge Fund, rolling gold. He took like three gold augments. He went straight to nine. Like he did the fastest nine ever. He's 4-2 level nine, took three gold augments, has Kaisa 2, and hits two Zayas. And has like items for everything. Anyways, haha to that guy. Guess what? This is why the game fucking sucks. Guess what? They're removing Kha'Zix next patch. They already said it. Uh, this is this is where I say GG the game's over. What do I need to do right now with my gold? All I want to do is level up three gold to level up I'm gonna go straight to 10 fuck that. I have 80 gold the other guy literally just hard went I don't know who he was one of the, the guys that I just fought he literally just sent it to nine and beat me because he sent it to nine He sent it to like zero gold and what happens now Kha'Zix shows up Guess what happens to that guy's game? Completely griefed. What happens to my game? I'm in a winning position. This Kha'Zix thing is so bullshit, right? Because the only thing that's keeping this lobby at a reasonable amount of like, maybe we can get past this Kabuko. Maybe this guy won't win. The only thing that's that they're holding on to for dear hope from the sheer wrath of this little furry dude is that I won't make it to level 9 or I won't make it to level 10 because like, as soon as I have, as soon as I start rolling my gold down, as soon as I decide that Kabuko scaled enough, and I start rolling, look at this shit. Look at this shit. <laughs> look at this shit. Oh, I just barely won. I'm greeting, that's why, obviously, right? I don't have 8 Bruiser in. I should roll for a Galio here. If you are less HP, the play is definitely roll for the Galio, get the 8 Bruiser, get like an actual carry. I think I still have like a Senna or some shit on my board, right? That's not, doesn't really do anything, right? You really have to play towards, um, those, play towards the units, right? Uh, that you need in order to like actually win out, right? Um, so that's why I'm losing HP here, right? It's not because Kabuko is weak. It's just because I didn't, like, you know, I'm, if I had Silas 2, I win all those fights. If I have a Galio, I win all those fights, right? I'm playing, like, an Azir with a Janna, right? Like, they both do no damage, right? Um, I find a list, whatever. Um, I'm looking at the gold to level up, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can go 9 right now. So I go 9. Um, there's two rounds of Kha'Zix remaining, and I have 50 gold. I can actually go 10. I can literally just go straight to 10. 
Uh, I make a Gunblade. I know double healing maybe isn't the best play, but Silas is going to have so much HP that I think double healing is fine. My Silas items didn't really work out, um, but I can't like not slam items because I definitely want to have a little bit of sauce. Uh, I play in the Morgana just in case I play towards Sages. Um, but Lissandra, hopefully she can farm me some components because hitting Lissandra early is great. Um, I think my eventual plan is to put the Bruiser Emblem on the Lissandra. So if I go... Uh, augments or I go items here let's go bruiser bruiser emblem uh, oh it says it's like really good on Rakan uh, I guess it, it, it's good on Rakan set Lissandra but I guess if I'm playing like 8 bruiser maybe it changes I, I was thinking bruiser Lissandra goes kind of nuts because like imagine if Lissandra just has a shit ton of HP where she doesn't die I was like that that sounds pretty broken Right, so that, that was my thought process. I want to eventually move it on to that. Um, I have like an IE, so I'm probably going to play like... Uh, if I can, I'll play... Um, what's her name? Irelia. Uh, so here, it's the last round of Kha'Zix. So I just send it. Um, like, I'm deciding, like, do I want to keep any of these units on bench? Um, or do I just want to level this turn? Like, I kind of want to use all my gold as much as possible, right? My Kabuko has been scaling the whole game. So the interest doesn't really matter. The, the 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 I can rebuild the interest pretty easily with the Kabuko anyways because it gives gold. I'd rather just be level ten, spend all of the Kha'Zix gold. I, I think the play is maybe to be like two turns off of level ten, so I definitely wasted six gold. Uh, and six gold could be a lot. That could be the difference of me winning the game and not winning the game, right? So this was definitely a misplay. I was just thinking in my head, ooh, level 10, level 10. What you're supposed to do is because there's this round, uh, the neutral round, and then the round after, you gain 2 XP per round. So what you do is you don't have to level to see the level 10, right? You can level so that you naturally hit that interval because you'll gain 2 EXP every round. Because being level 10 this turn in particular it didn't really matter. Right, I lost this fight anyways. Uh, now I'm level 10. So I'm going to roll pretty aggressively after these neutrals for... Um, what's it called? I want uh, Irelia as a carry probably in the back line. I want 8 bruisers, so I need a Galio. And yeah. Um, if I wasn't playing for first tier... Now this was a little bit risky, right? Obviously using the Kha'Zix to get to level 10 was risky. Um, the non-risky play is to stay level 9, make sure that you hit Galio 2, as well as like Silas 2, as well as other stuff, because the extra gold going to 10 doesn't really matter if you don't have the upgrades, right? Me sitting with a Silas 1, no Galio, um, is a little bit scary. I do just hit the Galio here, so it worked out. Um, if I didn't have the Galio, there's a little bit more of a problem. Uh, anyways, I have Irelia here. I take the Talisman of Speed, because I think that works good with Irelia. Um, and then I'm pro I think I'm gonna try my best to make Irelia items here So it might just be like a glove, but I already have Irelia too. So it's all good to go um, I could make a Hodge for like a frontline unit uh, Or I can make like a, a list item, which I think maybe I make a list item Redemption's also pretty good um, It was probably like Guardbreaker Deathblade for Irelia like take another sword, but I think I just was tunnel vision i want to make like shojin for uh lissandra because in my head i was like the only way i lose is with one of those like giga boards and i would like to have the lissandra because i have the lissandra with the bruiser emblem i want the lissandra to cast to make sure that um i can remove uh, a singular variable like for example the nar player the nar player that beat me i don't know if he um will scale hard enough to beat me late game so i really want lissandra to have some dedicated item because uh, I don't know why I'm still doing it. I, I, I think I'm just double checking. Right? I want Lissandra to guarantee be able to deal with the Gnar temporarily. So that I could um, properly um, win the game. Right, that, That's like one of the fights I'm worried about. Right, The other fights I'm worried about is maybe if someone has like some kind of Giga Tank. That my Kabuko gets stuck on. And then the rest of my board kind of dies. And then the Kabuko gets overwhelmed. As well as the Irelia. So... Uh, Lissandra is like the main meta thing like you can't really play for first unless you have a Lissandra because the way the patch kind of works is that Lissandra is like pretty much the best unit in the game and it works like really well to just like deal with certain things 
So as we can see here, this is what I mean. Like Lissandra deals with some of the tank stuff. It gives my Silas like a chance to wrap. My Kabuko lives really long. This guy is so fucking strong. He still beat me because I don't know how. He has he has no combat augments. He's level nine. He has Kaisa too. I think it just I think it just works that um Kaisa and Trickshot gets around my Kabuko really easily. So my Aurelia dies before um I can even get like a chance to like deal with anything, right? Um, I think that's the main problem. It is a little bit scary. I thought for sure I beat that guy. I still don't have Silas too, which kind of sucks. Uh, Jax comes here and says, "Hey, do you want a support item? Oh, what's this? An item that re that heals percentage HP? The fuck? Yeah. So th the game's fucking over. If you haven't re like, I've been saying it like all multiple times. Like, I know I'm losing fights and like 20 HP, and it's kind of scary, but I'm still like two lives, right?" I'm, I, I, I don't see how I lose this game. I, I was, I'm actually shocked that I lost one or two fights against the that other guy, um, like the Kaisa player. I think it's just like bad matchup. I think if I had Bruiser Emblem, like I was really tunneled on this Bruiser Lissandra. I think you should save your Bruiser Emblem and just put it on your backline carry, right? Like if I had Bruiser Irelia, like even here. Um, like if Bruiser Irelia probably Irelia takes like you know as much damage as she's taking, she would take like uh, what what's Bruiser scaling? It's eighty percent more HP, right? Eight Bruiser also does a percentage of HP as damage, which helps the Kabuko obviously, as well as the Silas and everybody else that's a Bruiser. But um, I think the Bruiser emblem on the uh, Irelia would be way stronger um, in this particular case, right? Um, I could have also played towards, like, I have Unified, so I didn't really think about Altruist. But right now, I'm playing, like, a random Lux for Porcelain. A random Rakan that I'm not buying is definitely better. If you look at the stats, Rakan, uh, even Rakan Bruiser Emblem is the best to to use, right? Like, let's go, um, here, I'll show you the stats just to back it up. So, like, in the stats, it says Rakan is, like, the best, like, in terms of, like, Delta and then even Relative Delta, Right? Uh, like, Lissandra's pretty good, but I feel like it would have been better on Irelia, right? I don't understand. When, when I look at these stats and there's, like, Delta and Relative Delta, I'm not sure which one to look at. I usually just focus on Delta, but I think Relative Delta, like, it means, like, situationally Irelia is a little bit better than Liss, which I think is what I'm finding right now. Um, but, yeah, I think um, having your backline carry, like, because there's so much backline access... Um, especially if you're playing something like this where I'm like a giga stall comp. I really want my backline to have a little bit more um, survivability, if that makes sense. Uh, I take... Uh, on Carousel, I took another Irelia item. Just because I don't have list 2 and I want my Irelia just to do some more damage. Uh, now with Virtue of the Martyr, I feel much more comfortable. Because if you look at my team, like my Silas is still max HP and he's like deleting the backline. You know what I mean? Like, my Silas is a demon, my Kabuko is a demon, my Aureli is a demon. I'm really far ahead. The lobby ended up being quite strong and pretty, like, uh, close in terms of uh, HP and stuff. Uh, I'm just looking to see if anybody's trying to, like, three-star some shit. Uh, because that happens all the fucking time. Uh, so, yeah, because my game to lose now. I still like I th I think I I just need some passive healing. I really should put Bruiser Emblem on the uh, Irelia instead of like greeting for this list because like I don't even have list two yet. I'm trying to build up some econ just because like in case I have to send it for some something, right? Um, just in case. But like, I don't know. I feel like I'm. I feel like it, if you look at the game and a lot of this comes from the Kabuko Augment just giving gold, right? I think that, like, I don't like them nerfing hero augments too much because then they become, like, unplayable in a way. And I think a hero augment is, like, a good thing. Like, if you have a spot for it, a guaranteed top four is, like, a nice thing to have in the game. And I think it's really fun. But you just have to know your way around, like, the unit and the board and the comp, right? Like, I feel very comfortable with this Kabuko comp, right? I never get, like, dizzy. I always know, like, what the best thing is because I looked at the stats. And I think that's, like, a good thing to have in the game. If I were to nerf it... I would just nerf the gold, honestly. Change the percentage to some percentage that makes sense based on your testing, right? Like, I'm not the game dev, so I don't know the exact number. But if the gold isn't 100% of the time, you get a gold. 
like just averaging it to something lower like i don't think if i don't know if 50 percent is too harsh or too little i don't know if it's like you make it like fucking 25 percent if that's too harsh too little i don't know where the where the fucking needle needs to go but that's the part that i think has to go because you know having a three star uh one cost and being level 10 before anybody else in the lobby is insane right for any comp even like the cogma reroll right or any other one cost reroll it's that you should not the, the trade-off of reroll is that you don't get to cap out your board as high because you can't reach those higher levels because you're investing the gold in spending rolling for that unit right now if you naturally you know obviously you can make it really far but with this kabuko he gives a bunch of gold so it erases that entire part so not only is he really strong i think the strongness of him doing the spell is like the fun part um, like I think that's fine. I think that's fun and cool, but like having that plus the gold drops Right, obviously you just nerf the damage and then he doesn't kill all the time But then I think the comp becomes less fun, right? I think that it's like, you know, I don't think that's I think it just makes it so that the comp is like pretty unclickable if you don't have this items off rip because if he's not killing early and you're losing too much HP you're just gonna die out if you don't have items for him, right? So I think the spell damage is cool but it's just like, you know, they have to nerf something. Hopefully they just nerf the gold and they keep him as strong as he is. Because then I think it's still cool and fun to play. Uh, I'm just like gathering five costs and four costs because I'm like, eh, you know, the game's probably over here. Um, that guy has no gold. Uh, the Kaisa player died to somebody else. So, okay, I have list two now. Uh, let's just like watch the ship sail into the night. Oh, my last Kabuko video did pretty bad. So hopefully this one doesn't do as bad. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I went second. Um, if you guys don't like these type of uh, specific videos to like hero augments or stuff like that. Or if you just don't like me in general. Uh, well, if you don't like me, don't tell me. But if you don't like this particular content, make sure to let me know in the comments. Uh, if you also have like, if there's something, even if I don't play the comp. Like if you haven't seen me play it or something. If there's any like concept or board or idea that you want me to do a video on i'm more than happy to like do targeted content if that's what people want so you know if you want to say like hey i saw this comp could you tr could you give a little synopsis on it or whatever i'm totally down anyways it's a first uh i think i gained like 40 lp i lost all this lp by the way i had so many low roll games after this but that's tft you know this game was a high roll the next three games i had worst games of my life uh, so I lost all the LP anyway. So, you know, don't get all uppity at me that I'm I'm abusing lucky paws because I, uh, I I paid my I paid my time. I did my I did my dollar. Right. Uh, anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, and hopefully uh, this was somewhat informative. I def this was a different version of the Kabuko comp and uh, hopefully it was equally as entertaining. Uh, and yeah, if you see it and you have Kabukos as well as some tank item components, make sure to take it because it is a very, 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 very strong uh, comp. And obviously it's like caps even higher with Bruiser plus one and you kind of play it like that. Uh, I'll see you guys around. Bye bye.